We just had a couple of points and we spoke about the fact that God is love, right? A couple of reasons about all of that. And one thing that we did have was we said God's love for us is unfailing. Yes. <coughs> never stop, it will never fail us. It's everlasting, which means even before our existence, God loved us already. Before the existence of the planet, before anything was here, God loved us already. It's unchanging. Nothing you can do can make God love you more. Nothing you do can make God love you less. It's true. It's a good thought. So a lot of times we think that we have to have good behavior to appease God mm -hmm. um, and to avoid bad things, you know. And God will listen to us as long as we are in good behavior and as long as we do what He tells us, then He'll listen to us. And then He'll love us. God's love is not conditional. Yes. God's love is not based on our behavior. Amen. God's love is not based on who you are. Oh, yes. yes. God made you because He loved you before He made you. That's right. Yes. 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 Okay? He created you because in His heart He loved you already. That's right. Yes. We said love's nature is to have an object to pull that love on. You remember that? Mm -hmm. okay? And because God is love, Love is God. Uh, we had was it a song yesterday? Yes, a Misty Edwards song, where she says, um, "Love's definition was looking at me." Yes, I mean, sure. The definition of love is God. Yes, yes, yes. The definition of God is love. Yes, yeah. There's many things we could say about God. We could say He's caring, He is faithful, He's all of those things. But the one that kind of takes it all in is love. Because if you go read 1 Corinthians 13, we did it with the singles on Wednesday. Love is kind, love is not boastful, love does not anger easily, all those things that love is. Love is almost like this umbrella term for all the other things mm -hmm. that God is. And somehow we want to know God is love. Yes, I mean. And God is the definition of love. Yes. We also said that we would not have love on this earth if it wasn't for God. That's right. mm -hmm. Because if God was not love, we won't have the ability to love. And you won't have the ability and the need to put our love on something else, on somebody else. Because we are created in the image of God. Everybody with me? Yes. Okay. That's basically what we see. Now today I want to talk a bit about the, the imagery, the illustration of God's love, right? Because God, God's love is so big. It's that's the word, incomprehensible. We cannot understand it without human eyes. Because God is huge, His spirit, He's eternal. Remember my, my illustration of God is a circle, mm -hmm. and we are lines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And our little line minds, our little line, we are here, and God is here. No beginning, no end, the trial just goes on. And, on. and our little minds, human minds, can't really comprehend the eternal things. It's too big for us. Yes. It's too huge for us. Even God's love, I think if we had to have a glimpse of the bigness and the purity and the magnificence of God's love, our little brains would explode. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe oh. that's why in the Old Testament, God always said that, don't look at me. Mm -hmm. People had to cover their, their, their faces, their eyes, right? Even when Moses went up, he could look at God as he went past, right? Mm -hmm. In like, like a cloud or a fire or stuff. But he couldn't physically look at God. Because it will be too much for us. God is too big. And this big, amazing, wonderful, awesome God we learned last week, He longs to have a relationship with us. That's why He made us. To love us, remember. That's the reason. That's the reason He created us. So God is so awesome that He he knew that he had to reveal himself to us. He had to explain this relationship that he wants to have with us in human terms. Yes. So that we can understand it. Mm. Right? Because we, we, we just can't get it. Okay. So some of the images that God used to, to kind of illustrate this relationship, to explain this relationship he wants to have, is for instance, the father-son, father-daughter relationship, right? Mm. Okay? Because even in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, <laughs> God is called Father, am I right? Yes. Okay? And he's also called our Father. Mm -hmm. Alright? Um, think of Matthew 6, where we, we have the, the Our Father, the prayer. Jesus taught us to say,
say, our Father who art in heaven, our Father, our heavenly Father. Mm. So Jesus came and he showed the Father to us, we showed God to us in the figure of a Father. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that we can understand a bit of this relationship. But it goes beyond that. You know, a lot of us get stuck in a specific kind of box of who we think God, God is. We think, okay, so I'm just going to relate to Him in terms of a father. Or I'm just going to relate to Him in terms of a brother mm. or a friend. Remember the song of I am a friend of God? Mm. We like singing that, right? Mm. So a lot of us get stuck in a certain kind of box and we think, okay, that is what God is to me. And that is all that I maybe can handle at this stage. But today I want to talk about deeper things. I want to talk about deeper images. I want to push it a little bit. I hope you guys can, can bear with me. Interesting question though. Those things that I mentioned now, father, brother, friend, all those kinds of terms, they're all male terms. Am I right? Kind of male words, right? Okay, even the pronouns there. So my question to you is, is God male? Some people get uncomfortable when we start talking about this. We didn't know in group one time. We spoke about, about God and does God have a gender? Hey? <laughs> it's not an easy one because we tend to always think of God as Father, right? What happens when we grow up? We kind of have this idea of this guy with a beard and the stick or the, the, it was like a Zeus kind of idea with these thunderbolts. He's going to hit us, right? We think of this as old man, don't we? Okay, so we put God in that box. And the problem with that is, what if you are a person that didn't have a good relationship with your father growing up? What if you are a person that struggled maybe with male figures in your life? Don't you think there's a chance that those kinds of experiences will cloud the picture you have with God and, and the way you connect with God sure. if you see Him in that same light. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. Definitely it will. And we spoke about it that time at home, if I remember that, but it will not be. So, I think if we want to go deeper into God, if we want to move closer to His heart, deeper into His love, we almost have to break those molds yes. that we have yes. for God. Yes. We have to break those boxes that we have of God, yes. of just seeing Him as this, or as this, or as this. Because God is more. What if we say now God is love? You know how, how God chose to reveal Himself to Moses? We're going to read there. You guys can turn with me.
chew that fact for a couple of days, months, even after that. Sure. And then later on, we have this description where Jesus spoke to some people, right? And there was a discussion about Abram and Moses and all kinds of things. And he said, you know what? Jesus talking. He said, before Abram was, I am. Now, how do you get to the answer there? Sure. Okay, English people help me with the tense here. It doesn't make sense. Before Abram was, I am. I am. Not before Abram was, I was. I am. Amen. Present tense. I am. All inclusive. Everything that you need. Sure. So today I want to I want you guys to break that box as well. Last week we spoke of what if a person hurt you in the name of God? Sure. What if a person came and, and you thought they loved you? They came in the name of love. Because now we know God is love, so we kind of connect the two, right? Sometimes. Mm. So now we're in a relationship with a person or a friend or a family member, somebody that was supposed to love us. Sure. And they kicked us. And they cast it aside. And they hurt us. And they almost stoned us. And they Bible bashed us. And they did all those things. Mm. And what we tend to do is we look at that and we say, wow, that is how God is. I want to be part of that. Sure. sure. And it's because that thing kind of, we have this box. And we see this person does this. It's in the Father. We see a Father do these things to us. And now we hear in church what God is Father? Father? After what my father did? Sure. I do not want another father, no thank you. Mm -hmm. And that is something that can really be an obstacle for so many people. To connect with God. God is more. God is more than just the boxes that people try to put him in. And God wants to be close to your heart. God wants to be I am to you. You know what I am is? Anything that you can be. I am means I am your comforter. I am your helper. I am your protector. I am everything. It's all inclusive. Almost like I deny. We said last week the word I deny. It's an all inclusive name of God. But I am is almost even bigger than that. Because it's everything that you might need in a moment. God can be that for you. I am. And that is him. Sure. Mm -hmm. So break those boxes of just thinking of God in one picture of a male figure maybe sitting on a throne waiting to talk to me. Break that box of maybe just seeing him one way. Yeah. Break that box and just open your mind that that is actually not all that God wants for you. Okay, just to blow your minds a little bit, we're going to look at, let's make it two scriptures. Go to Isaiah 66, 13. Isaiah 66, 13. Matthew 23, 37. As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you, and you will be comforted over Jerusalem. Okay. We said that God uses images, right? Illustrations to kind of bring it into human terms to make sense for us, right? So in this verse, what is God illustrated as? As? A mother. A mother. A mother. Okay, and I know when we did 
get that other thing in blue people's minds. To think that maybe, okay, maybe God isn't male, just male, because we always have that idea. But God is bigger than that. God is bigger than a human term. Mm -hmm. God is bigger than our gender terms that we have. Mm -hmm. He's bigger yes. than our boxes that we try to make to try and make sense of a God that we can never comprehend anyways because He's that big. Yeah. Like as a mother comforted child, am I right? Mm -hmm. There's another one that we're not going to read right now. It says, as a mother holds her child and breastfeeds the baby. Mm -hmm. To some people, this is too much. <laughs> to think of God breastfeeding a baby or something, you know, like that, that image is like, no, don't go there. Don't go there. Okay? But this is just to show you that it's, it's not just the one thing. Yes, I believe in the culture of that time, God had to pick an illustration that would make sense to the people, isn't it? Yes. Maybe if it was more in these times, he would have come and showed himself as something else. But in that time, for instance, if Jesus didn't come as a male person, because remember, Jesus is fully God. He squeezed himself into the mold of a human. What would have happened if Jesus came as a woman? They wouldn't have, would they have listened. You know what women rights were back then? Less than zero. <laughs> Less than zero. So God had to use the images that would make sense of that time and sense to the people to come and show himself to us so that we could get closer to his truth. Okay. So don't let that block you. The other one we had was Matthew 23, 37. What's to Jerusalem, Jerusalem, who, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often... I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you were not willing. Okay, let's read it one more time. Okay. Let's keep this in mind now. We can get it 
when I speak here. So their society, Jesus obviously knew the rules and the regulations of growing up in that culture, right? Do you know how upset the Pharisees got and all the people around him because he said, let the children come to me and he was holding me, sure, blessing me. And he said, no, let the woman come. There was a lady that came in and she anointed his, his feet with, with expensive perfume mm-hmm. and dried his feet with her hair and her tears were flowing. And he said, no, no, don't chase her away. There was a woman that they were about to stone because she was caught in adultery. Okay? And uh, adultery, sorry. Okay? And usually that takes two. Uh, yes? Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so why did they only bring the woman? Why? Where was the man that she committed this crime with? Probably the crowd saying, yeah, kray, kray. <laughs> And that was society for you. That's how low they saw women in standard at that stage. That even if there was a crime like that, the man was kind of untouchable. Sure. And the woman would be nothing. And they were standing there, they wanted to stone her to death. And a lot of times back then, I don't want to freak you out, but a lot of times when there was abuse against women, the woman was seen as the wrong person. Mm-hmm. If a woman, woman was abused or even raped sometimes, they would stone the woman. That's how bad it was back then. Right? And then Jesus says, Do you have the verse for us? Please read that verse, just 27. For all of you who were baptized into Christ has clothed yourself with Christ. Okay. Well, after that. Yeah. Oh. Uh, there is neither Jew or Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for you are all one in Christ That's right. Jesus. Okay. That verse tells us that in God's eyes, there is no male nor, f- nor woman, male nor female, sorry. No. There is no slave nor free. There is no Sutu and Zulu. Mm. There is no this and this. Mm. None of those things matter. Right. Because in God's eyes, He sees a person. Yes. Okay? That's the way that He looks at us without the boxes. Yeah. So we should also return the favor and start breaking those boxes. Yes. That we put God in first, that we put people in second. It's true. Break those boxes. There Jesus was, and he, can, he, he walked with the woman and he lifted him up. And he said, You are just as important. And it's not here now about men and women, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm showing you that we must get away from these images we have and that it stops, sometimes it's a, it's a hindrance between you and God. Yes. Let that go. Let that go. Mm-hmm. So that you can get closer to God. Mm-hmm. The next image I want to talk about that's all fine, right? Now we have the image of a father, daughter, son, mother, so daughter, son, whatever. We have brother, we have friend, we have all those terms that we're used to. Now I want to challenge you because we said in this month, we're going to go a bit deeper. And you can only go a bit deeper with a deeper image of God if you allow yourself to break those boxes first of all. Because if you can't even get past what you think God is, how will you be able to move closer to his heart? And how will you allow him to get closer to you? If you still see him as a certain person, and that person hurt you, and it's a blockage. Okay, so that's why I spoke of that. But the images that I want to talk about today is an intimate one. The God of heaven longs to have an intimate relationship with you. And now this is I'm like, what? That's weird. Because I'm used to the Father, I'm used to the this and the this and this. But He longs to have intimate relationship with you. Okay? If we think about, about marriage, right? That's about the most intimate kind of relationship we can think of, right? Okay? So if we think about marriage, how do you think people knew that they had 
get to marry? How did they know that they, they would want to commit themselves to one person, bind themselves to one person? Don't you think it's natural to us to have the need? We said, just like love needs an object to pour its love upon, right? Mm -hmm. We are all created. God said it's not good for man to be alone. We are created with this need almost to have this intimate relationship with somebody or have this close relationship with somebody. Am I right? Mm -hmm. And we search for that person. People at the singles thing we spoke about don't they look for the right one, be the right one, right? Mm -hmm. So we look for that person. We look for that one person that we can bind ourselves to, that we can do life together. Why do we have that need? The man in the image of God. It means that firstly, he has that need. Sure. Mm -hmm. yes. Don't confuse this with God. Last week when I said God doesn't need us. I'm saying God wants an object to pour his love on. And that he wants the, the relationship of, of him and that object, us, to be so close as if it's a marriage relationship. And that is our first question to you. It's images of <coughs> husband and wife, of bridegroom and bride, of lover and beloved. The Bible is full of images of God reflecting, reflecting the relationship like that. And for you to get closer to God, you have to allow yourself to somehow start playing with these terms. And now once again, the words can get you stuck because now we have husband and wife. Okay? Just remember once again that God uses the terms to put it in human language so that we can make sense of what He actually wants. Mm. He's not talking here about husband and wife. He's talking about the type of relationship that they have. Because mm -hmm. sometimes now, people will struggle to, to kind of think of God like that. And I think some, some men might struggle now to relate to a male figure, or they might, vice versa, it depends on your makeup, obviously, right? But it could be a problem now, once again. So don't think about the words. Think about the type of relationship that God wants, that closeness. Because He's a spiritual being, and He had to come and explain these things in physical terms mm -hmm. so that we can make sense of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So quickly about the husband and wife. That's the imagery that God used a lot in the Old Testament, especially for Israel and for Him. Mm -hmm. Right. We read a lot in the prophets, we'll say, Yah, um, God says that you... Um, you cheated on me with another lover. Mm -hmm. Imagery like that. Yeah. Um, if you can turn with me quickly, Isaiah 54, 5. Jeremiah 31, 32. You can get there. Isaiah 54, 5. Jeremiah 31, 32. Let's just look at this. Though I was a 
has been to them the king is the Lord. Okay. So there are many times that God revealed himself or explained himself to be the husband of, of the people of Israel. Then in the New Testament, we have a new term. When Jesus came, he started using the terms bridegroom and bride. Now, once again, that is a very intimate relationship. Okay? But you are first a bridegroom and a bride, and then you become a husband and wife, right? Mm -hmm. Okay? So this one that Jesus used is kind of with a, a future perspective of a wedding that's going to happen. That's interesting. There's a wedding that's going to take place in heaven. The church of God, the church of Christ, us. We are the bride. And we are being made beautiful and ready in preparation to be with the bridegroom. Okay? Now, once again, like I told you, if you have a problem with gender terms, it's going to be a problem for you. Okay? But it's about the relationship. That close relationship. Because what, what kind of feelings do you have towards the person that you're about to marry? Hopefully and love. <laughs> what do you feel? What do you feel? I mean, it, it's such anticipation. It, it's passion. It's yearning. It's longing. It's almost like you feel you're about to burst. I think being in love is awesome. But just that, that countdown to actually getting married and being with that person. That is the kind of intimacy that, that, that Jesus is trying to show us here. And I'm just going to read one verse for us. That is actually, that is actually a prophecy about Jesus being the bridegroom. And it's in Isaiah. Okay? Isaiah 62, verse 5. And it says, As a young man marries a young woman, so will your builder marry you. As a bridegroom rejoices over his bride, so will God rejoice over you. That's beautiful language. That's intimate language. Because if you're about to get married to somebody, you are, you, you do rejoice about that person. And it's all you can think about. That person being joined together. And that's the kind of imagery, once again, that Jesus that Jesus comes to show us there of him being the bridegroom. You must remember the culture of that time as well. The bridegroom being the one that that went away usually, right? And then the bride would sit there with her all her people and whatever and she would prepare herself. She would go through, remember it was back then, so they didn't have all the nice things to, to make herself pretty. So it took quite a while for her, right? To prepare herself for the return of the bridegroom, yeah. yeah. and then they would be wedded. Yeah. That's how it worked in those days. Okay? And that's the image that God is using here. Remember, Jesus was here. Now he is away from us. Yes. But we are in this process of getting ourselves ready, yes. preparing ourselves, longing more for him, wanting more of him, being closer to him, yes. and longing for that time that we can be yes. together. And that is the kind of image that God is showing us here. Mm -hmm. Don't be scared of closeness with God. Mm -hmm. Don't be scared to start breaking the mold and start thinking of God in a different way. Because this is different. Father you can handle, brother, friend you can handle, but this, this is close. This is very close when, when, when Jesus starts saying such things. James 4 8 tells us, Come near to God and He will come near to you. God is a gentleman, right? Mm -hmm. He will never push Himself on you. But He's waiting for you. If you take a step closer to His heart, you'll find Him there. Yes. If you take another step closer to His heart, you'll find Him there. Because every time you come nearer to Him, He comes nearer to you. Yes. But He's waiting for you to take that first step to say, well, more of you. Yes. You're just saying that. Instead of fire, he said, I want more of you, Lord. I want more of you, Lord. It's dangerous to sing such a song mm -hmm. if you don't realize what you're singing. Because that is saying, Lord, I'm pushing closer to you, closer to your heart. Won't you come reveal your heart and be closer to me? Because isn't that what
what happens in a loving, intimate relationship. Mm -hmm. You get to know the person better. Yeah. They get to know you better, yeah. right? And we become closer and closer and closer. And then the Bible says the two actually become one, and we realize that we are still two bodies. So we are not one. The one part is when, when, when the soul part starts merging. And you become an entity. And that is what happens with Jesus. Yeah. That is also the process of sanctification, some of you will know, when we are made more into the image of Jesus. Because we come closer to Him. The more we come closer to Him, that every step we take, we kind of behold the beauty of Him. Yeah. And when we look into His beauty, He changes us to that's also right. reflect that beauty. That's right. that's right. And that's how this relationship works. Until the day that you are perfect and you can meet Him face to face. Yes, and that is the type, that is the imagery of this closeness. So once again, like I said last week, Hear God's heart in this. At the beginning of the year, our New Year's, we got a couple of words of what this year will be about. You guys will remember one of them was intimacy. Yeah, that's right. You guys remember that really? Mm -hmm. Intimacy was a word that God gave us for this year. Mm -hmm. And I think God is saying, You are my children, yes. But I want you closer. Yeah. I want you on a new level. Yeah. I want you in a deeper place as what you've ever been before. Yes. I, want, I want your heart. I don't just want your service. I don't just want you to be my child and try and please me. I want your heart. I want your love. Mm. I want you to not just see me as love, but I want you to, to pour your love out of me. Yes. Yes. Just like our third image there, the lover and the beloved. Mm. That's got nothing to do with gender now once again. The lover is just the one in that, in, in that instance that pursues the heart of the beloved. And in the Bible, we are called the beloved. Yes, and we, we are called the beloved. So once again, challenge yourself. We sing this word in church. You won't even realize when we sing some songs now, you're going to see some of the words. You'll be like, wow, is that what I've been singing all this time? <laughs> and you, maybe you didn't even realize. Sometimes we sing about being God's beloved and we have no idea what that means. Wow. Mm -hmm. But this is dangerous to sing because you're saying to God, Lord, I am I'm moving deeper in than just being a child, a follower, a whatever, and I want to be that close to you. Sure. Beloved is actually just two words. Be loved. Love. Yes. That's what it is. God is love. He made us to sure. be loved. He made us to be the beloved. That's what He made us to be. And that is His deepest, heart's desire for the relationship that He wants for us. And that's your choice. It's your choice how far you are willing to go closer to God. Because some people might not be ready for that. Some people might not feel comfortable with that. But once again, it's your choice. If you can get close to God, you're going to experience such amazing things in those intimate moments with God like you've never, ever, ever experienced before. Mm -hmm. I said here, yeah, marriage is usually words like commitment, a decision, a pledge, it's intimate, it's agreement, it's emerging, it's a blending. All those things. And those words are what God wants. That is what He wants for us. In this close relationship with yes. sure. My last point. We spoke a lot about gender terms and whatever. I want you to think of it in this way. God is heaven and we are earth. God is eternal and we are limited. But one, but one day we're going to be with him. That moment your line, remember I said if it goes and your line stops. God wants you to be with him in eternity, and that's the reading. Sure. That's the reading. So for now, while we are still on our line, and somebody described it so beautifully on, on Wednesday, Mr. Charles, Jackie, and she said that we're on our line and our line is ups and downs. 
and we fall and we get up again. But this line of us actually goes like this a little bit. Because life is tough. But at that moment when we get to the end of our line, we move into the circle of God. And that's how we can that's the way we can be with our creator. Exactly like he made it to be. Because interestingly enough, God says there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. A new Jerusalem. There's always going to be this concept of God and us being joined together. Yes. So the marriage is not between a male type figure and a female figure or a whatever. The marriage there is between heaven and earth. Yeah. And we are all earth. It doesn't matter in what package we come. Yeah. Yeah. And it's between heaven and earth. And if God can love us so much, it doesn't matter the package. And he wants to have that union, right? And we are made in his image. But obviously we will also have the need to have somebody and to have that same kind of closeness. It doesn't matter the package. Isn't that interesting? So this is between heaven and earth. That's the beauty of God. He longs to, to be joined together such a close, intimate place. You are God's beloved. Jesus is bright. Not in any kind of gender sense of the word, but in a heaven connected with earth. And just start thinking about it this week. Start praying about it. Start maybe looking up the word. And you will get to the book in the Bible called Song of Songs. Have you ever read that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure. The person said the other day, if you really could, could go through the Bible and see all the explicit stuff in the Bible, yeah. you won't, your, your mouth will just hang open. It's actually a wonder that they let us carry such a book into church building <laughs> because it's so explicit at times. But a book like Song of Songs, right? Go read it a little bit, it's hectic. This one's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> she's read it, you see. No, she's <laughs> getting it to <turning> read. <laughs> okay, a book like that is about a, a lover and his beloved. But it's also imagery of God and us, yeah. of Christ and the church. So if you dare, <laughs> if you dare, you don't have a fight, but go look through it. Or go just go look at terms like bridegroom and bride, beloved and lover in the Bible. Go look at it this week. Start talking about it maybe. Start looking out for songs where you're singing it already. And start using this term. When you think of yourself, start thinking of, I'm God's beloved. Look at yourself in the mirror now. It's more than just saying, I'm accepted. I am healed. I am whole. But if you say, I am God's beloved, sure. That's mm -hmm. deep. That is deep. The imagery of an a couple who's in love, a couple who wants to be together. So go look at this this week, go look at it this week. Next week we're going to talk a bit more about intimacy with God and what that means to different people. I hope you're not too shocked. <laughs> you're okay. Yes. Yeah. So a lot of people might not even ever thought about God in this way. So think about it, go pray about it. And I hope you are able to just shatter those boxes, go beyond that. See a God that is neither male nor female, a God that is spirit, and a God whose heart is beating for you. He is longing to be closer to you, but you have to take that first step. That's right. He's calling to his beloved. That's right. Saying, You're my beloved. Come here to me. Mm -hmm. Are you going to hear the call? Are you going to move? Let's just pray before we do that. My Lord, I want to thank you, Lord Jesus. We can tread on this wonderful ground this morning, Lord. Just thinking of you in different terms. I pray that you will help each one of us, Lord, as we move closer into you, Lord. So that we will know it's not just God is love, but now this God of love wants to have this intimate relationship with me. He wants to know me. He knows me already, but he wants to be close to you, Lord. Help us to, to grasp some, some of these things. Help us, even if we can't understand it, Lord, to just relax into the, the fact 
that it is into the truth that you love us that much. That you are the one Lord, that's after our hearts. And you are the one who is standing here begging us to love you back. Because that's the kind of relationship that you want us to move into in this new year. I thank you for that, Lord Jesus. Come and help us, Holy Spirit. You are the helper. You are the one that leads us into all truth. And you are the one that can help us just grasp this in some way. Lord, we want to move closer to you. We want to move deeper into you. Just speak to us, Lord. And we thank you that you love us so much. Close our mind, Lord, unchanging, everlasting, unfailing, unconditional, Lord. You love us. And I pray, Lord, that we'll be able to take that same love that you have for us and also display to other people. Oh, yes. That same love, Lord. Break those boxes, Lord Jesus, and also love other people in that way that you love us. We love you and we love others. Thank you, my Lord. Help us on this journey, Lord Jesus. In your precious name, my Lord. Amen. just want to read to you guys one last verse, Revelation 19. From verse 6, it says, then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roar of rushing waters and like loud peals of thunder, shouting, Hallelujah! For our Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give Him glory. Amen. This is a vision of what's happening in heaven, right? Amen. When God's people arrive. Let us rejoice and be glad and give Him glory. For the wedding of the Lamb has come, oh, and His bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Fine linen stands for the righteous acts of God's people. And then the angel said to me, Write this. Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper. Amen. These are true words.